Media Bite Podcast Network. Jason, mother is talking to you. Welcome to the Sasha Podcast. This is season two. This is season two of the Sasha Podcast. Thank you for coming back. I hope you enjoyed the new intro. That was incredibly fun to make, and I think it's really, really cool. Um, I love it. So I think it's going to stay, or at least for this whole season, and then we'll move on to the kind of whatever. So this is basically season two. Um, season two is kind of going to be more very specific about either genres, about a specific movie, um, less general, more specifics. Um, and I'm going to do a lot of research about everything and kind of make it more research heavy, a little bit um, less conversational and more research heavy. So because of that, these episodes will come out a little bit longer from each other, like a little bit less uh, frequent, but because of that, it will have a better show, hopefully, in general, um, including because I wasn't able to do this, I got the, because I wasn't doing podcast episodes, I was able to make that cool, really, really cool intro before we get in to the topic of today's podcast i do want to give a little bit of notes a little bit of a, a note um if you are watching this on youtube um i will tell you that there will be some videos probably whenever i want to make them probably closer to reviews type things and but however most of slash it's future will be podcasts um in general i will have some videos so don't get too upset by that i will have videos whenever there's a good video idea that I think like, I specifically want to make. Uh, that might happen around Halloween ends. It'll happen around more movie and bigger movies come out. But for now, I want to focus on being a podcast because I love podcasts. And I love making podcasts. And I love listening to podcasts. And so because of that, I want to make this podcast more entertaining for everybody. So I'm going to be kind of putting my focus into being an actual podcast and less a YouTube channel. But I mean, YouTube channel and podcast are the same thing. But so if you want to listen to the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, just like up, look up the Slash It Podcast um, channel and like on pretty much any podcast network you can possibly think of will have the Slash It Podcast on it. And if it doesn't, you need to tell me like as soon as you possibly can, because I want to make sure that I'm having it and putting it in the right place for you guys. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. Um, just because I want to get to make sure that everybody is actually enjoying the podcast episodes that I have for you and kind of enjoying parts of, parts of this, because this is really fun for me and I love being able to show this and share my love of horror movies with all of you. Um, so I'm going to reintroduce myself as if you guys had never heard of me before. Hi, my name is Jared. Um, I love horror movies. I've loved horror movies since I was a little itty bitty child. Um, it's some of my favorite movies I've ever actually watched, although I am a, or just a movie lover in general, so, um, that's just kind of a general thing, so, I like movies in general, I have a whole separate podcast about that, which I will be getting into more frequently, um, so one thing that we do want to, I do want to point out really quick, um, so the pop my uh, so there's a bunch of podcasts I have. They're all under the Media Byte Podcast Network. Um, Exploring Cinema is one of them. It's kind of just about movies in general. There's Slash It Podcast, and then there's the Media Byte Podcast and the J and Day Podcast. I'm on all of those podcasts. So if you like me, if you just like my personality, you can go listen to all of those, and we will get all of those more as time goes on. Okay. Well, after further ado, you can follow me. It's on Twitter. If you want to follow me for whatever reason, it is at Slash It Podcast. Or at slash it horror horror, sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing that word. Um, so you can go follow me there. Uh, keep the, up to date with all things like this, um, all things horror, all things everything. Um, so if you did not read the title of this podcast, um, it is all about zombies. Today we are doing an entirely zombies just episode, focusing on zombies, everything and in between, and so. With that, I have some research done over here, and also I'll be giving my kind of personal feelings about zombies, what zombies have done to horror movies, what they've created, and what their 
the future of zombies looks like. So, so let's get this started with a little little fact. Uh, I will be pronouncing names completely wrong here, just so we're completely aware. I'm terrible at pronouncing names that I've never heard pronounced out loud before. Victor Halpern's White Zombie was released in 1932. It is often cited as the first zombie film of all time. Um, so kind of more about White Zombie and what that actually did. White Zombie, it's, it's a pre-code horror movie, which if you don't know what the Hayes Code is, it's basically the, the, the censor board at now... Um, by then, it's as uh, Bella Lugosi, um, which is you know if you don't you should know him by now hopefully if you've been watching all these. Um, a lot of white zombies was um, um, there's a lot of props from other movies in that time period because of the Universal Studios lot. There was a re there was a sequel called Revolt of the Zombies which was in 1936. Um, the reception to White Zombie has been more positive since since then um basically what this movie is about it's much more about voodoo the original what zombies originally were way back then they were more uh, they were more like a voodoo masters like um uh, army of bad guys rather than like something like um less like um uh, you know dead, brain-dead zombies who are undead, coming back from life for no reason. It was more like, hey, okay, I'm going to create these zombies and they're going to eat you. That's kind of more a lot of what it was like. So, basically, this guy, he um, goes to this house. He, like, um, some, he meets this, uh, like, voodoo master who um, turns somebody into a zombie uh, a bunch of other stuff happens, and then the zombies basically eat people. And, you know, they, it's the start, it's the first real full-length zombie feature like this. Like, just in general. And, um, so what's what's important about this movie is it's like, it's, it's, it's so, when you think of zombies and you think of, like, the modern day zombie you think of something that's much closer to what none of the living dead is which we will get to don't worry um you get you think much more of none of the living dead much more walking dead and less you know witch magic stuff right well that's not how they originated and not how it was intended or when it was originally written because it comes from a myth about voodoo legends and those kinds of things and how they can make zombies come back to life. Um, so that's White Zombie. That was 1932. It's often cited as the first zombie film ever created, which I think it's kind of an interesting, Just it's just kind of interesting. And this kind of inspired a lot of horror movies to come out around this time. Um, but, um, so there's just like, there's a lot of them and there's kind of so let me let me find there's a list of zombie movies that came out around that time all the way back in the very very late 1930s and the 1940s. There was another so it goes from that from in 1930 it goes from that in 1932 to Maniac 1934, Revolt of the Zombies 1936, The Devil's Daughter 1939, The Ghost Breakers 1940, King of the Zombies 1941, Bowery at Midnight 1942, Dead Men Walk 1943, I Walked with a Zombie, which I will talk a little bit more about that because it's a very important movie, 1943, Revenge of the Zombies 1943, Voodoo Man 1944, Zombies on Broadway was 1945, Valley of the Zombies 1946, Creature with the Atom Brain 1955, Voodoo Island, 1957, The Woman Eater, 1958, The Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake, 1959, and then we get into a little bit more closer to Night of the Living Dead. And so I want to talk about that, how there was a break between Valley of the Zombies in 1946 and Creature with the Atom Brain in 1955. And that is also a lot because there's a lot of the brain... Like, a lot of the um, culture at the time switched a lot greatly from sci-fi to, from, like, from more of, like, the Frankenstein era of horror movies to more sci-fi era of horror movies. And that's a big reason because back, 
Once you get into the 50s, the late 50s, you have Invisible Invaders, Planet Nine from Outer Space, and Teenage Zombies. And that's kind of part of the problem is, so all the way later, in 1968, is when Night of the Living Dead came back, which is kind of when we animated corpses came back. So from 1968 to 1932 is when, from 1932 to 1968, I should say, is when zombies became, were more, like, fake. They weren't, they were more sci-fi, more out there, less, less, like, human beings. And I think that's kind of an interesting take because another great movie you have to watch is Carnival of Souls. And that's kind of one of the big mixtures of both of these understandings, which is perfect because it came out in 1962, which is right around the time when it was about to switch from horror, like, you know, sci-fi to more realistic things. Um, Invisible Invaders, which I talked about very briefly, it's about aliens possessing people, which is... If you have never heard of that, uh, there's a great movie that you should watch. Um, I'm not going to tell you. You should maybe know. Maybe maybe go figure it out. In- aliens invading people, invisible invaders. It, around that time, um, I want to see if you guys can tell me what that movie is in the comments or on my Twitter account. Um, <laughs> the first Color of Zombies film was... Doctor's Blood's Coffin, um, the first movie to have, um, infected human beings was The Last Man on Earth, which is the actual, where I Am Legend is the first adaption of I Am Legend in popular culture, um, and then that's when we get to Night of the Living Dead, which is the first film to depict zombies as, you know, cannibals, um, so let's kind of talk about something else that's kind of important. So late 1930s and 1940s included I Walked with a Zombie, which, again, that is an incredibly important movie. Um, it's one of the movies where it's it's, one of, it's kind of an unnamed movie. It's, it's very, like, um, it's kind of a precursor in a lot of ways to Night of the Living Dead, including that it's it touches on a lot of problems that the movie had and you should have with slavery and things like racism, um, kind of the beginning and the first touch of what it was like. Um, and, and I mean, and we're talking, this is 1943. We're like in the middle of, you know, segregation hadn't even been done by the point this movie had come out. So like, like segregation had been done, but like it hadn't been redone, like undone by the time this movie came out. And so it touched with problems that it had with, slavery and racism in like there's a lot of like it 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 showed the problems that it had with racism and sexism and 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 um like slavery in general at the time and what's crazy is like 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 it had problems with slavery and racism and it's just crazy that like that, that it's kind of the perfect leader up to Night of the Living Dead, which talked about racism and, you know, slavery and all of those things, even what, what would that have been? Um, let me do some math here. Um, God, too many years, like 20 years later, over 20 years, 25 years later. Yeah. So a quarter of a decade later, they're still talking about racism and slavery. Um, and I think that's just, it's, that's, that's one of the movies where you cannot let yourself like get past it um because it's very important to just human like humanity in general and like how zombies and horror movies horror movies have always been a political thing um if you i don't know if so this is a really t- interesting tidbit that i know that i think is very very fun um zombie movies and zombies not zombie movies specifically horror movies i should say horror movies in general have always done better commercially and are always like higher rated during times um, when there's a um, Republican um, uh, president in office, um, it's always been like that. Whenever the Republicans hold the majority of the Senate or the House or the presidency, there's always a tick up in horror movies, in both commercially and 
uh, rate, like review wise. I'm not discussing politics. I will not discuss politics ever on this um, podcast as much as I possibly can steer away from it. Um, that's not what this is for. Um, but but that's that's just that you can check the 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 box offices and the reviews. So there's something to do with how that works. So it's so horror movies have always been a response politically to whatever the culture is talking about at the time because horror movies have a way of being able to discuss certain things that other movies just don't have in the same way. Um, so we're gonna move on. So some of these, these see, these are not not all of these exact quotes I'll be reading are mine. Some of them come from Wikipedia or other places like that. Um, so. So, yeah, so late 1930s and 1940s was I Walked With a Zombie, which was 1943. So, remember, so, so far, movies I've talked about. Uh, Victor Halpern's White Zombie, 1932. Um, and then I Walked With a Zombie, which was, again, an incredibly important movie. Racism, all that stuff. 1943. And then, so that was, that movie, more about Haitian folklore, which is kind of where everything comes from, um, zombies-wise. However, the the modern zombies emerged during like the last half of the 20th century, about but closer to like the 70s with um, Night of the Living Dead. So I do want to talk about Night of the Living Dead because of how important it is to zombie movies and just movies actually as general, like just in general. Um, so. This movie is filmed right around the area of Pittsburgh, if you did not know that. It's kind of cool. Um, I actually considered going to George Romero's film program, but I decided not to, ultimately. But it's very cool. Um, this movie kind of drew influence from the same place that, uh, what was it? I believe it was named, let me find the name of the movie that I'm talking about. Because it took places from the same place that, um, the, the original, um, let me see if I can find it. It was the same place that, um, let me see it here. It's here. Let me find it. I will find it. I promise. <laughs> um, it is, okay. I promise I will find it. I'm just being crazy and stupid right now. Don't, don't. Don't get upset. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, The Last Man on Earth. That's what it was. The Last Man on Earth. I should have known that. Um, so from I Am Legend, which is... So I so Last Man on Earth, which was 1964, four years before this movie came out, um, is what None of the Living Dead kind of... Like the, the, leg, the original book, I Am Legend, is what they kind of drew influence from. So George Romero kind of drew influence, as long as with um, Rousseau. Uh, what was his name? It's... Um, John Russo um, helped co-write it, actually. Um, and so this movie it kind of did a lot of things. Um, so it's kind of the beginning of kind of an understanding that horror movies with a low budget can make a lot of freaking money um, and be incredibly culturally impactful. Look at Halloween, look at Night of the Living Dead, look at The Little Rich Project. Um, basically, how not, George Romero kind of grew up, he did a lot of, he directed a lot of television commercials and like very industrial type films for uh, his company, um, production company based in, up and around Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so they made a horror movie, they wanted to make a horror movie, and they wrote the script for Night of the Living Dead. Um, Right around that time, it took place, like, the shot between 1967 and July and January of 1968, which you can kind of tell the differences in the outsides. Um, but this was the kind of the beginning of guerrilla filmmaking as a whole, like, the type of filmmaking that is designed with almost no money at all. Um, many, 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 many techniques that people like the Blood Rich Project used, um, stuff like that which we will get a whole, I think I'm going to go a, do an entire episode about the Blair Witch Project because I can talk about that for years and years. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that as of now. Um, so following its theatrical premiere in Pittsburgh in 
Um, Night of the Living Dead grossed twelve million dollars. Um, so it was. It has a lot of violence. It has a lot of gore. That was right before the American rating system was taken, which is crazy. That was only nineteen sixty-eight. Um, the film is now in the National Film Registry, if you did not know, and also. Um, Dwayne Jones is the main character's name. He is a African American, um, and that was not something that you ever did back then, which also greatly increases its chance of understanding of its political ending. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that because only because um, something I find interesting is George Romero technically did not because of the way that the casting worked. So let's put it this way: so because of the way the casting worked. Um, so Dwayne Jones, yeah, he's an African American. Um, so the ending of the movie of Night of the Living Dead, if you've not watched it yet, please go watch it. Don't get it spoiled for yourself. But if you have, just go and check check here. Listen to me talk. <laughs> um, so basically, what happened was Dwayne Jones was cast not because he was African American, but because he's a great actor for the role and he fit the role perfectly. But at the end of the movie, there's a, a group of cops, a group of, like, like you know, men with guns walking around and killing a bunch of zombies. Because the zombies, the zombies in this movie look like humans. They don't look much different at all. Like, from far away, it's hard to tell. It's just, it's hard to tell from far away what they actually look like, right? And so, basically, with the way that it ends is... He, he picks, he stands up in front of the window where all of them are looking at, and he gets shot, and he's dead. And that's something to do, I mean, more power to the people who take it and see that political side and see that stance that George Romero was making. However, I, if I remember correctly, he did not intend that to happen that way just because it was not, like, intended to be about, uh, like, horror movies like that like it wasn't intended to be about not horror movies about racism and stuff like that and that's not it's an interesting understand um there's there's so much um like like the movie was not really understood at the time like it, people went to it not really knowing what they got and they literally like there were people freaking out about it freaking out um uh there's a lot of a lot of discussions i would go look that up because it's very, very interesting. Um, you should definitely go check it out if you can. Because it's actually really, really entertaining. So let's check this out for a moment here. Night of the Living Dead entered the public domain. Because the original theatrical distributor failed to place a copyright notice on the prints. United States copyright law held that public dissemination required copyright notice to maintain a copyright so image 10 displayed such a notice on the title frames of the film beneath the original title in the original title but the distributor removed the statement when it changed the title because it was not copyrighted it's received just so many releases on dvd and blu-ray listed editions of Night of the living dead numbering 13 on vhs 130 on dvd 12 on blu-ray one on blu-ray 3d and 56 on Amazon video. The original film is available to view or download um, pretty much anywhere you can think of. Like, you can download it, watch it straight from YouTube, you can watch it straight from VHS, you can take it literally anywhere you can think of. So, the the, the newer versions um, have become kind of copyrighted, um, sort of, sort of, kind of, um, only because it's like, like you can't take a Blu-ray cop version of the movie and upload it, um, because that's like you can't you can't take a remastered version of it and upload that. You can take a VH, a Blu-ray that's like upscaled. You can take that. Anything that's been done since then cannot be done. You have to take like what was what was happened. Um, um, like you have to understand that like you can't take like the Criterion version of the movie and just up rip it and upload it because it doesn't really work like that um just because of copyright laws and how those all work Night of the living dead if you have never seen it it is a great halloween movie it is one of my favorite halloween movies to just shove on 
during the middle of the day on a Halloween night um, is by far my favorite thing to do on Halloween, just shove on Night of the Living Dead. There's nothing that feels more like Halloween to me than that. Um, so, so that received a sequel called Day of the Dead, which a lot of people consider to be just as good, if not better, than the original Night of the Living Dead, if you've never seen it. There's, basically, there's a trilogy, it's Day and Dawn of the Living Dead, um, you should really go check out all of them, because they're all not bad, in my personal opinion, I know some people can, can think that it's bad, but I, I like Day and Dawn of the Dead, and I actually prefer, I think, I think it's Dawn of the Dead or Day of the Dead, but that's just my personal feelings. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what I think. Um, so yeah, it's it's my I like um, Night of the Living Dead, um, and then there's Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, and Survival of the Dead. I like Dawn of the Dead better than Day of the Dead. Um, I think. Let me make sure I'm getting that right. Which, whichever one is in the mall, I want to make sure I'm getting that right. Um, yes, I like Dawn of the Dead better. Um, then there's Land of the Dead, Die of the Dead, and Survival of the Dead, which I've never seen. Those are all much newer. Um, each movie tries to, like, take, like, specific people and, like, understand how it, the epidemic of zombies has changed as time has gone on. Um, And then, so here's something that's really interesting. John Russo, the co-writer, released Return of the Living Dead. Um, it's an alternate kind of version, like of the sequels to Dawn of the Dead, rather than Dawn of the Dead. Um, and so there's a lot of issues with, like, kind of annoying because, um, uh, like, John Russo kind of took and kind of felt like he was competing against him, which he kind of was, so let's just be honest here. Um, um, then there's there's a version by George Romero's son, who's trying to make a movie called Rise of the Living Dead, which we also have a movie called Crystal of the Living Dead, I think, or something like that, which is coming out. There's also a remake in 1990. There's also a Night of the, Living, anim, Night of the Animated Dead, which came out last year. It's an animated adaption of the movie, um, um, and so there's a lot of Night of the Living Dead movies coming out, and with that, we're going to move on from possibly the biggest, biggest and baddest, um, movie that really inspired and changed horror movies and zombies as a whole. So we're going to move on to something, to the, um, just that's, that's just as crazy. Um, uh, well, Return of the Living Dead has come out with... There's like four or five Return of the Living Dead. I think I went to the uh, Mahoning Drive-In Theater, which if you not, not, don't have any clue what that is, uh, the documentary about drive-ins and all those kinds of things, which I actually have a drive-in documentary that I'm going to film and get all of that all worked out and uploaded. And that'll be fun. That'll be on the Media Byte podcast uh, channel. Um... So yeah, sorry, that was very not related to this at all. I was just thinking about that in my head as it popped up and I was going to talk about it. Um, but I got to see Return of the Living Dead 3. I think it's Return of the Living Dead 3. Um, yeah, Return of the Living Dead 3, which was like the very late uh, late 90s or early 90s, I think. Yeah, Brian Usna, 1993, Return of the Living Dead 3. <laughs> it's fun. It's stupid, but it's fun. Um, not really related, but that, that, has, that has four sequels, I believe. I think there's four sequels to Return of the Living Dead. Um, Dawn of the Dead is the biggest one since then, because just, it's, Dawn of the Dead's a great movie. Um, so now I'm moving in to the late, like, the early 2000s, and kind of everything that happened then, because a lot did happen. Um, so in 2000, in the 90s, there was a remake of Night of the Living Dead, the original. Um, and then in 2004, there was a remake of Dawn of the Dead. And then we're going to talk about how there was a resurgence of zombie movies in the very early 2000s and kind of in the early 2010s, too. Um, so the Resident Evil film movies came out in 
the early 2000s, which if you don't know, that's based on a video game, um, which if you don't, haven't played the Resident Evil video games, uh, you should. They're really, really incredibly fun. Um, in the year 2002, 28 days later, arrived in theaters and re-sparked the zombie fanatics for almost another 15 years, uh, 14, 13, 14, 15 years. I mean, The Walking Dead came out after this. Um, if you do never, never seen 28 Days Later, I will not be spoiling 28 Days Later in this podcast, specifically because I don't want it to get spoiled for anybody, because it's a really, really entertaining movie, and I love everything to do with 28 Days Later, so go watch it if you haven't. Make sure that you put that on your list of movies that you have to watch, because I'm going to give you all homework at the end of this podcast and kind of movies that I talked about, movies that you should go watch, and everything like that. Okay, and then there was a sequel, 28 Week Later, which came out 28 weeks later, which came out five years after the release of 28 Days Later, followed man who woke up in London and had to see what happened. Um, not going to talk about that. There's House of the Dead, which is kind of an entertaining movie. It's not, I don't like that one very, very much, but it is a thing that happens. Um, in 2004, however, there's a Dawn of the Dead remake, which I actually really, really like. And here is the first movie that I can tell you for sure that I watched that was a zombie movie. Um, I saw this movie probably too early in my life. Um, you might be surprised. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. This is when you move into kind of parody movies of zombie movies, which happened a lot around that time. Um... Again, with Resurgence, becomes parody. Um, same thing happened with Scream. With, you know, you get Scream, you get Scary Movie. You get Scream 2, you get Scary Movie 2. Um, Shaun of the Dead is a great movie. It is incredibly funny. It's done by Edgar Wright. If you don't know who Edgar Wright is, uh, he did Baby Driver. Um, he's done a lot of movies uh, that I like. Um, but Shaun of the Dead is probably my favorite. He's done the Hot Fuzz and At World's End, um, which is... Those three are the Cornetto trilogy of movies that he's made, which I love. I love all of his movies. Um, zombies films at this time were they 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 first of all they sparked a, a whole like generation of horror movies after this time, which took took a lot of time and a lot of effort to understand what that all truly really did and how that affected humanity and zombies as a whole because it kind of came from a place where people were scared for the future of just life in general at the time and i mean people still are but i mean specifically and so zombies are kind of our way of understanding death and coming to terms with that i think personally personally i think humanity is our way of it's our way of coming to terms with death and all of that and so with the 2000s it became the change in the the very difference <laughs> in the early, early 2000s where zombies became less... Okay, I will put that into words. Um, <laughs> they were less... They're, in the late 50s, early 40s, you know, late 60s, zombies were more docile, less agile, more vicious, more intelligent and stronger in the late 60s, or, 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 or in the early 2000s, less, back in the late 60s, they were more, more calm, more, just vibing, they were kind of just chilling, compared to where zombie films would take them in the early 2000s to be much more, think of World War Z, if you've never seen World War Z, there's a scene on a helicopter, which is actually, I really like World War Z, I'm not gonna lie, um, basically, fast, will eat you in five seconds and you won't even have any clue what's happening. Um, they pile on top of each other to reach high walls, that kind of thing. Nobody's safe from the zombies and nobody's safe from that kind of feeling. Um, so in the late 2010, zombies began declining in the Western world. Um, Japan and, uh, yeah, Japan, the low budget Japanese zombie comedy one Cut of the Dead, which I actually own. It's a shutter. I found it at the dollar store, so maybe you can look at there. 
at the buying dollar store, maybe around you too, they may have one. I, I got it for like $2. Um, it's a DVD, but I don't really bother too much sometimes. Um, it's made box office history for earning over a thousand times its budget. It made over a thousand times its budget. There was a profit of 900 and 99 times its budget, which broke records at the time for being making the most money uh, like ever. Like it's it's crazy how much money that that made. Um, so I want to talk really quickly here, um, just about some things that happened in the early early 2000s. I mean. We haven't even gotten into Evil Dead yet. Evil Dead was in the 1980s. Like, that's... There are so many things that have just came and ran away from all that stuff. Evil Dead, which is... It's not traditional zombies, but it it kind of is. Um, that's kind of also the beginning of the more violent zombies. But I have not really researched a lot of into Evil Dead, I can tell you a little bit about, about Evil Dead. If you've ever heard of Ash Williams, Ashley Williams, uh, Bruce Campbell's character, um, you have to go watch at least Evil Dead 2. You really don't have to watch even the first Evil Dead because it's kind of... Okay, so, so a lot of people think that it's a direct remake. No, it's not a direct remake. The way it works is the events of Part 1 happen again because at the end of Evil Dead, the Evil Dead, the, the, the weird ghost phantom thing, I forget the names um, of all of the characters right now, they come and they take you away, he hits Bruce Campbell's character, Ash, and in the beginning of the second movie, after you do the recap of the first movie, um, they basically, um, basically what happens, and basically what happens is um, they... He gets pushed back, and he flies through the air, and he basically, like, time basically goes back in reverse, and then that's when the events of Evil Dead 2 happen again. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole thing. And then there's, and then there is, crap, Army of Darkness, which is a great movie. He's got his, he gets his, you know, he freaking rips it, he's ripped, he's a castle, he's on the castle, it's old, um... There, it's it's incredible. It is an incredible, incredible, just film series. I don't like the first one as much personally. That's just my personal thing. I like. I think Evil Dead Two is better. Um, Evil the original Evil Dead. I can understand the, the thing. I just I have to skip certain scenes in Evil Dead, um, because I don't appreciate, some of that because I don't really understand it at all, um, why certain things were included, but they were also, seventeen stupid. So I really can't blame them for being stupid in the early 80s. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that. Um, let's move on. Reanimator was 1985. I also got to see this at the drive-in. Reanimator. I have a wallet from Reanimator. Oh my god. Reanimator is a great, great movie. It's a great soundtrack. It is something that, like, Reanimator is a movie you have to watch in order to like horror movies because... Reanimator is like the classic 1980s movie, just in general. Uh, go check it out as soon as you can, if you possibly can. Uh, Night of the Creeps came out in 1986. So I'm going to kind of go through the early, like through the 80s. Um, there's a lot early on that I don't really, that aren't very important. Return of the Living Dead was 1985. Um... Raiders of the Living Dead, it's 1986. I was a teenage zombie, which a lot of people really like. It, I was a teenage zombie. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting movie. It's a, it's like a horror comedy kind of movie. It's kind of the beginning of that. Kind of where it is kind of fixes a lot of slasher tropes with marijuana, etc., into a zombie movie, basically. Um, there's Prince of Darkness, which I like. That's a John Carpenter movie. Um, Wes Craven directed Deadly Friend in 1986. Yeah, 1986. Uh, there's Maniac Cop, 1988, which I like. Uh, and then there's a bunch of zombie 
the UNBI, which I don't think I really talked about that very much. But there's so many zombie movies that it's kind of hard for me to talk about. Uh, Chud 2 <laughs> came out. Uh, Bride of Reanimator. Uh, Pet Cemetery, which is technically a zombie movie if you did not know. Um, Pet Ce- these are this is the very 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 eight late eighties to the early nineties. Uh, Pet Cemetery came out in nineteen eighty nine. Zombies. It's a zombie movie. Zombie pets are also zombies, I guess technically. Um, so you gotta watch that. Um, it's it's a good movie, but. Yeah, and then there's Bride of Reanimator, which was 1990, and then Night of the Living Dead remake, which was directed by Tom Savini, by the way, that was 1990, and then there was this, now we're moving into the 90s, which I don't, it's kind of like my least favorite part, least favorite decade for zombie movies, at the most part, uh, there was Return of the Living Dead 3, um, and then we kind of get into stupid movies by then, but the late 80s kind of, the late 90s hit them up. Quickly, you have I Zombie, um, which is kind of an interesting movie. Um, and then you move on to Children of the Living Dead in the early 2000s. And then it starts back in 2002 with 28 Days Later, which goes back to what I was talking about. In early, the early 2003, however, there was a, re- a sequel to Beyond Reanimator, which I like. And then we kind of move into a modern era of just zombie movies in general kind of hit and swarmed and ran quickly 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 all the way from that from the early 2000s to in the late 2000s diary of the dead i am legend in 2007 both uh resident evil movie another one in 2007 there's a lot of movies that you've got to watch just around this time um so that's kind of so that's kind of the research that i have about the zombie movies in general like but i want to talk about kind of the history of zombies where they came from, and what they all had to do with just in general, it's kind of everything. Um, so origin, the origins of zombies, the ancient Greeks, possibly were the first civilization kind of scared by the fear of the undead. Some of this, his, this a lot of this comes from uh, history.com. Go check out their origin of zombies uh, article if you want to go read more more stuff that I may have skipped over in terms of this podcast. Uh, the ancient Greeks were the kind of the, may have been the first civilization scared of the undead. Um, there were many, many ancient graves which had skeletons that were like pinned down. Basically, they were chained or pinned down by rocks, by like heavy stuff. Um, assumed, like I mean, you can assume that they're to prevent the dead bodies from coming back to life and eating people. Zombies folklore, however, has been around for centuries in Haiti, possibly originating in the 17th century when West African slaves were brought into work on Haiti's sugarcane plantations. Brutal conditions left them longing for freedom and, um, according to some reports, the life, or rather afterlife, of a zombie represented that plight of slavery in that time period. Zombies and voodoo. Voodoo is a religion, or this is what it sells me, I don't really know for sure. Voodoo is a religion based in West Africa and practiced throughout Haiti and the Caribbean, Brazil, the American South, and other places. Many people who follow believe zombies are myths, but some believe zombies are people revived by a voodoo practitioner known as a bokor, B-O-K-O-R. Again, I don't know a lot of the words pronounced here, so if I'm getting something wrong, I apologize greatly for that. Please let me know how to just de- say some of these things in the future. So they have a tradition of using herbs, shells, fishes, animal parts, bones, other objects to create concoctions, quote unquote, including quote unquote zombie powders, which contains stuff, uh, neurotoxin, and uh, like other marine species like neurotoxins. Um, basically, what they do with doses that are not lethal can con- can cause like zombie-like symptoms. Difficulty walking, confusion, and respiratory problems, the noises. Um, it can lead to paral- paralysis and uh, comas. Um, so then, this could cause someone to appear to be dead, be buried alive, and then later reanimated, which is where the myths and the that whole thing comes from. So I did want to. So that's kind of the what I have about the 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 original, very very original history 
of zombies and just that kind of thing in general. Well, so now I want to talk about again a little bit more about zombies because we're going, we're going, we're moving and we're, we're rushing straight on through. Um, video games, there are a lot of video games about zombies in general and I want to talk about some of the very, very beginnings, um, very, very beginnings of zombies video games because I find video games for zombies to be very interesting and they are horror games, um, they're, they're, they're horror video games, um, um, so, so this is, these are all the cancelled ones that were cancelled and never released in the early 2000s, uh, there was a game that was originally going to be based on Night of the Living, like, the Living Dead series called City of the Dead that was cancelled, there was a third person survival game called Dead Rush that was cancelled, um, The Grinder, which was another game, uh, first person shooter, it was going to be on the Wii, <laughs> um, and then it was denied and removed, um, this is a survival game pre-release, it says on Wikipedia, that was called Human Element. It said 35 years after zombie apocalypse, must try to rebuild civilization. So this is kind of, this is one of the earliest zombie games um, to come out was Entombed in 1982. Must make their way through an endless vertical scrolling maze filled with zombies. 1984 was the Evil Dead game, which was on the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum. Um, the player, Ash Williams. Must fight the Walking Dead, reanimated limbs, and other monsters while trying to defend a log cabin. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Then there is Realm of Possibility, 1984. Kind of an action adventure game. Zombie Zombie, 1984. Rebuild, must rid a city of the undead. Ghost and Goblins, 1985. Side scrolling, zombie with an eye. Inspired, graphic adventure inspired by the film. Dawn of the Dead, a group of survivors is forced to land their helicopter atop a zombie infested shopping mall. The vehicle must be refueled so they can escape. So moving on past, because there's a lot of zombie games in this early, early time. There was Zombie Nation, 1990, Monkey Island 2, which was apparently a zombies game. Um, there was all of the Doom games, which is, you know, Doom, the Doom series, 1993. Um, zombies, demons, monsters, and other creatures like that. There's Isle of the Dead, Isle, Isle of the Dead, which was 1993, a uh, first-person shooter game, which I believe um, is a very, very fun game. I believe I have played that. Um, there's a lot in the Dark 3, which is a survival horror game about zombies. Moving on to something else, kind of interesting, which is the most important part, to be completely honest with you. Uh, the Resident Evil series, which was started in 1996. Many, many different types of things like uh, games it was on um it's survival horror series there's usually a story in the resident evil games i've played resident evil 7 which is my favorite um you should play that too if you haven't um it's mostly about the story there's mostly a story you walk around a building and you get stuff done uh, i'm not gonna spoil anything to do with that game but yeah so moving on there's the half-life series which is 1998 alien zombies kind of things go play those games if you haven't they're actually amazing. Um, there's another Evil Dead series of games which came out in 2000 to 2005. Hail to the King, A Fistful of Broom, Boomstick, and Regeneration. Uh, those are the three games that came out all along that time. Um, then we move on. There's, there, there's a Judge Dread game, which is about zombies. There's an X-Files game based on zombies. Um, Killing Floor, which if you've not played Killing Floor, that's a really, really fun game. Um... And then there is the, the Dead Rising series, uh, World of War, which is my personal favorite zombies game of all time, uh, that zombies mode in Call of Duty. Um, so I'm not going to reference every single Call of Duty game that happened, but World of War and the zombies on Call of Duty are probably my favorite zombies games of all time. They're so, so fun. Um, then there's the Left 4 Dead series. There's the Dead, Sp Dead Space series. Um, there's Minecraft, which technically is a zombies game. There's zombies, Plants vs. Zombies. Um... There's Red Dead Redemption, the zombies version of that game. There's a lot. There's Dead Island, which is a great, great game. Um, Day Z, uh, The Walking Dead games. Um, Seven Days to Die, which is a great game. The Last of Us, which is the most probably one of the most popular zombie games ever. Um, the Last of Us and The Last of Us 2. Great, 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 three times great games. Uh, there's a World War Z game, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, the Last of Us Part 2. 
Back for Blood, Zombie Army War 4, Dead War, which actually is a really, really fun game, not even lying to you. Uh, and then there's Dying Light 2, Days Gone. So those are all the very, very fun games that I like, and I think they're kind of an interesting games in general. Well, thank you for listening to this. Almost as we record this right now, it's almost an hour long, 50 minutes. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode all about zombies and their origins, the most popular movies about them, and where they kind of took, where they're going, how all of that works out, and what that all really means, and what zombies are in general. Thank you for just listening. Thank you for season two. Thank you for coming and listening to season two. Um, this is kind of more what all of the videos, the podcast episodes will be like, like, they'll be like this, um, about an, probably about 45 minutes to an hour, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, somewhere in between that, um, depends on how much research I had to do, how much information there's to talk about, like, I had a bunch of stuff to talk about video games and all that kind of stuff, um, I don't know what will be next, uh, if you guys have any opinions, please go listen in the, uh, go, go follow me on Twitter, um, at Touch It Horror, and I would appreciate you just telling me what you think you want to listen to, honestly, um, because I am cool researching a lot of different genres, a lot of different specific movies, because, like, I may go back to a movie that isn't the zombie movies that we referenced here today and do a very deep, 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 deep dive into, like, Night of the Living Dead, for example, or Returning of the Living Dead, or Dawn of the Dead, or Day of the Dead, or any of the other of the deads. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you for listening to this. I hope you liked the intro. That was really fun for me to make. I loved doing the intro. It was really fun. I can't, I made it myself. Um, the, the, the music I did not make, um, and the, the very opening sounds I did not make, but like putting them all together, I made that and I made it sound like how it sounds. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, you, you can check out all that. Go check out all the other stuff on the Media by Podcast Network, please. Um, because there's a lot there and I would appreciate you. It's just Media by Podcast Network. Uh, you can go follow Media Byte Co. on Twitter, and you can see all of the podcasts on there. Because uh, it's it's all me. It is all me. I make I I create all of them, and I'm kind of the showrunner for all of them. But you know, there's my brother, my partner. Um, they're all they all help me make these podcasts what they truly are, and so they give me time to make great great podcast episodes. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you loved listening to this and I hope that whatever comes next you will be there you will be listening so I appreciate you all I appreciate you all listening and staying by and we are at 94 subscribers thank you that is bonkers that is bonkers mode to me um thank you for listening thank you for watching thank you for everything you guys have done for me over the last year thank you I mean happy anniversary to to slash it I mean it's been about a year now I think since I started, it's been over a year since I started the Sasha Podcast, so happy anniversary to the Sasha Podcast. Um, thank you for everything you guys have done for me, for the years, and what you guys will be doing in the future. Thank you if you've ever stopped and listened to something in Media Byte. That means a lot to me, because that's kind of, I'm trying to make a company out of that, um, and Sasha is a part of Media Byte. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for everything. And like always, for the first time in season two, Remember, treat every day like it's Halloween. For more podcasts like this, please make sure to listen to all the podcasts on the Media Byte Podcast Network.